Coming up in today's show, Nintendo had a direct and we got to see Bayonetta 3 and I got to play Guardians of the Galaxy. What's good, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the What's Good Games podcast, your source for video game news, commentary, analysis, and funny stuff every Friday. I'm one of your hosts, Andrea Renee, joined by Miss Brittany Brombacher. Andrea, I just had the realization. <laughs> oh, that, that hit me like a ton of bricks. I oh, know, fuck. right? Um, oh, hi. bad. I, oh. Well, hi, friends. I'm here. I'm still here. We're both still here. Brittany, I, we will get guests on the show. They will uh, hopefully be in on the bit. We'll talk to them about the bit and see if they'll pick up <laughs> the baton that Steimer has less, left behind. Um, but we love that you guys are here and joining us on the podcast. It, whether this is your first episode or your 241st episode of What's Good Games, we're glad that you're here because it's been an exciting week. Despite the fact that it's a little bittersweet for Brittany and I because our third chair, Christine Steimer, is getting ready to fly to Germany in a day or two. Nintendo had a direct today, so we delayed the taping of the show. So we're recording this on Thursday evening, and it's going to be a long night, as if it wasn't going to be a long night for both of us anyway. (laughs) It's one of those things where I saw the Nintendo announcement on Twitter, and I was like, let me guess, it's on Thursday. Oh, of course it is, because it always is, because that's what Nintendo does. I feel like rarely they throw us a bone, and we get a direct on Wednesday, which is our typical recording night, but nah, Thursday. Nah, Thursday it is. And even later in the day on Thursday, too. Not like the 1 o'clock or the 10 a.m. 3 p.m. Pacific time. But it was worth it because we got a ton of announcements, which we'll get to in just a second. Thank you, Patreon producers. Chewie's godson, Alex Rogopoulos, Ferris Ati- oh, I can't say your last name, Ferris. I'm sorry. Justin Foshi, Matthew Goddard, Punctified, and Trevor Starkey. We love you guys. And welcome to our Patreon community. Lewis Arison and Fake Empire. And thank you, new podcast reviewers, July Mart 16, Ashden 8, and Trick W24. Thank you so much for your reviews. A lot of them were bidding a duel to Steimer and wishing her the best of luck. And we will pass along the good words. Thank you so much. These reviews do help us in the Apple charts. In fact, Andrea, we recently got a shout out from Apple Podcasts, which was oh, pretty fucking yeah, cool. Oh, yeah, I saw that, Bert. That was yeah. pretty neat. That was pretty, pretty spiffy. So thanks, friends. Because of that, you know, Apple's Senpai notices us. So thank you. It's nice when Senpai notices. It is. All righty then. Now that I have my materials in front of me, I want to say thank you to HelloFresh and Fixture Gaming for sponsoring this episode of What's Good Games, but we'll talk more about them later. For now, let's jump into the news, starting with that headline that I already mentioned. Bayonetta 3 has resurfaced with a gameplay trailer. So this was one of the things that the internet was hoping slash predicting that we would see in the direct. We haven't heard from Platinum Games or Nintendo about Bayonetta 3 since 2017 (gasps) when the game was announced. Isn't it a little bonkers? It was that many years ago. I couldn't believe it. where's, Where's Bayonetta? I don't. See I couldn't it. believe it, and then I looked out. I was like, "Okay, when was the when was Bayonetta two released? 2014, Andrea, on the Wii U. 2014, mm-hmm. and then we took three years to get the announcement of Bayonetta three, and then it took another four years." <laughs> it's but I fine. did play the Switch ports. Those were fun mm. to play Bayonetta and Bayonetta two on Switch, which yeah. are available if you, in case you're interested. And you're like, "What the heck is Bayonetta?" Um, oh. Well. If you guys want to check out the trailer, we highly recommend you head on over to Nintendo's YouTube page. We're not going to be showing any of the B-roll here because, as we've mentioned before, we keep getting copyright strikes on these showcases. But um, the trailer featured cinematics with in-game footage, according to Polygon, with Bayonetta coming to the rescue against a kaiju-esque enemy who is overwhelming the local defense. Bayonetta and her trademark pistol heels arrive on the scene to take care of things. And... It, it's just glorious. So what I love about Bayonetta is the combat feels a lot like the Devil May Cry series for people who have played that game. I think that there's a lot of similarities in the, kind of like the big set pieces and a lot of the combos and uh, the way the hack and slash gameplay kind of feels. But obviously it's, she's got her own flair. It's very different than what you get, you know, with the characters and DMC, Dante Ugh. and all that. Um what I really am excited about, and hopefully it's co- going to stick to it, is that it's supposed to be coming next year. 2022 is the date that we got. My God, I hope so. 
I fucking hope so. We've waited long enough. This was a great way to end the Nintendo Direct. And it was just such a glorious trailer. Because, again, like you have these pity, these pathetic military personnel trying to take down this big kaiju. They can't do it. But who better than to save the day but Bayonetta? And it was so glorious because then she went into her witch time and everything like slowed down and then she descended from the heavens. And she has this badass new hairstyle, these big, lovely, beautiful pigtails, braided pigtails, which I think should make a comeback. Just throwing that out there. And she says something along the lines of like, oh, it looks like I'm unfashionably late, but don't worry. I'll give you everything you want. And she does this cute little like quirky wink. And then, boom, she kicks ass. I just love this woman so much. She is just such a fun, fun character. And these games are just so incredibly satisfying to play because she, everything about her, I am mesmerized by Bayonetta. The way she walks when she shoots, the little one-liner she has, and she's fucking hot as hell. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, damn, girl. Yep. Oh, she is. But you know what's interesting about this is, I think it was last week, Helena Taylor, I believe, is the usual voice actress for Bayonetta, Someone had been singing her praises on Twitter saying, and this was not related to this trailer, obviously, because this hadn't happened yet. But they were like, Helena, like, we love you. We can't imagine anyone being Bayonetta but you. And then Helena said that she's not at liberty to talk about it, but you might have to imagine a Bayonetta without her. And so I went back and listened to the trailer, and it does sound like it's a different voice actress. So obviously like it wasn't the first thing I picked up on so I think Bayonetta sounds fine but I don't think it's the same voice actress which is kind of a bummer but who knows what happened there but um I think she did her justice though yeah whoever it was she sounded fine yeah there's always like there's always more to the story when characters change voice actors um and it's rarely the drama that the internet makes it out to be it's usually just like contractual (laughs) It's usually something really boring and legal, legally based. Um, yeah. But yeah, we're excited. Excited to see more. Excited to get hands on. Ready for Bayonetta 3. Um, next up, we're just going to kind of like really kind of go through these because there's quite a, quite a few announcements quite that happened lot. today. Uh, Nintendo's apparently real Mario movie stars a <laughs> bunch of cool celebrities <laughs> like Chris Pratt and Jack Black. So this came as a, a shock to me. And I... <laughs> First of all, I completely, like, didn't know that Nintendo was working on this, like, this animated Super Mario mm. Brothers movie, and the cast that they rolled out today was oh ridiculous. So, Chris Pratt, the guy that you may know from Parks and Rec, from Guardians of the Galaxy, from Jurassic World, from a bunch of other projects that he's done, is playing none other than Mario himself. That's such a weird thing. And I want, yeah. I mean, maybe some people know. And Charles Martinet, is it Martinet or Martinet? Martinet. Martinet is involved in some way, shape, or form. Now, this is an animated show, movie, friends, so it's not like live action or anything. But I wonder why Chris Pratt is playing the Mario, the plumber himself. Probably because somebody who's involved with the financing of the movie is a fan of Chris Pratt and was like, let's get Chris Pratt. And we'll pay for him. <laughs> like, Fair I, enough. I don't know. <laughs> Honestly, I I don't know. I think I like Chris Pratt as an actor. Yeah. You know, I don't know him as a personal figure, as a, as a person, I guess is oh. the word I'm looking oh. for there. You're not going to, like, pick up your phone um, and call up Chris Pratt. I enjoy his movies and the television that he's done. Um, Anya Taylor-Joy is playing Princess Peach. You guys mm-hmm. may recognize her from The Queen's Gambit, an excellent series if you guys didn't watch it it was wonderful and then jack black is playing bowser i'm <laughs> so like good. what what is going on it's so crazy and then there's charlie day playing yes. luigi which is so good <laughs> i love it oh boy uh and then keegan michael key is toad Seth Rogen is Donkey Kong. Kevin Michael Richardson is comic. Fred Armisen. Armisen. I'm so glad that he's playing Cranky Kong. I was like, yes. Love that. That's a great stunt casting. Um, And then Sebastian uh, Maniscalco is Spike. I just love that they went so hard on this cast. And as you mentioned, Charles Martinet, the legendary voice of Mario, Luigi, Waluigi, many other characters in the Super Mario Brothers franchise, is going to be involved in the project, but they did not specifically say. And I wonder if that's because he is going to be um, Wario or Waluigi in the film. And they haven't announced it yet, right? 
Yeah, that would be a big. Everyone fucking wants Wario and Waluigi. Like, the, it's so funny how many fucking fans those two characters have. But yeah, like, where's our Martin A boy? I think he. Uh, and of course, like Twitter was where you know why is Chris Pratt? Why is Chris Pratt poo pooing all over it? Whatever. But what I think is interesting is that it's a Mario movie, but they're obviously bringing in the, don- the Donkey Kongs, if you will. Mm-hmm. You got Donkey, you got Cranky. Interesting that there's no Diddy. Maybe to be announced. Maybe to be announced. Maybe this is just like a little a little teaser. But I still have no idea what the hell this movie is. And I don't think anyone does. Andrea, anything that happens while we were or happened while we were on maternity leave, I just it's a black hole of knowledge. Like I have no recollection of it happening. I've never heard of half the shit that went down. So when like, yeah, Miyamoto san came out and is like, Hey, remember this Mario movie we announced? I'm like, No, sir, I do not. not. Same. <laughs> I, I like, do nope. not. Missed it. Um, but it's coming out December 21st, 2022. So next holiday season, I guess, Brittany, by then, hopefully we can go see it together. <laughs> <laughs> LOL. I fucking hope so. <laughs> we'll go to an afternoon showing. We'll bring the kiddos. It'll be great. They'll throw popcorn everywhere. <laughs> we'll be those parents. <laughs> we will be. Those. We'll just rent out the theater to ourselves. Yeah. You know. Yeah. It sounds great. Simple, easy, um, easy. All right, moving right along, we also got to hear from one of my favorite Nintendo games of the last year, Animal Crossing New Horizons. But we really didn't get to hear much because they said they're going to have another direct. Your information is in another castle, so to speak. (laughs) Ooh! Um, But they did give a little teaser about the roost. So I, obviously, for people who follow this show, am new to Animal Crossing for New Horizons didn't play any Animal Crossings before. So I was like, ooh, a new thing called the Roost. And the internet's like, oh no, it's an old thing called the Roost. Uh, So there's a character named Brewster and he's got a cafe (laughs) called the Roost. And it looks like you're going to be able to access it through Blathers Museum on your island. And we will have more details coming in a direct specifically about Animal Crossing in October. And it looks like this free update will be launching in November. This was the direct where you announced your directs. Yes. Animal Crossing got one. Smash got one. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I thought of you when I saw this, but you have not touched Animal Crossing in a hot minute, have you? I played in the early days of my maternity leave when I was up around the clock, uh, as you probably remember. <laughs> and it was because I needed something that I could hold in my hands that wouldn't disturb the baby and animal crossing was it. And I also needed something that didn't require any brain power. I needed yeah. something that I could pick up and put down at a moment's notice and it would not matter. There were no stakes whatsoever. I could like not leave it paused. I could not turn my switch off and not have to stress about it. And animal crossing is it right? Like there was literally zero stakes in me just doing my chores on my Island every day and pulling your weeds. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Um, kicking people off my island. That was my goal. It was just using my <laughs> amiibo cards to get the <laughs> islanders that I have hated forever finally off my island. Goodbye, Jacob. You know what you did. <laughs> oh, my God. So, yeah. So, I'm excited to see more. I forgot until this exact moment <laughs> about all the cool Halloween stuff that I have in my inventory that I've been waiting to use. Because one of my gripes with Animal Crossing, of course, is that they do these fun seasonal events, but then they make you wait until the day of the season, like Halloween Day, Christmas Day, Valentine's Day, whatever it is, right, to actually Mm. get all of the things. And I'm like, no, but I want to use it in the weeks leading up to. Like, I want to decorate my island now for Halloween. I don't want to wait until the day of Halloween to decorate. Oh, no. You got to so, build the atmosphere. You can't yeah, just like. Yeah, exactly. So I want to like collect everything in advance and not wait for, you know, Jack to come around and grant me all the recipes or whatnot. Anywho, I digress. Yeah. There's lots more other stuff to talk about than Animal Crossing. <laughs> uh, we got a new game announcement. Britt, you want to take this one? Oh, Kirby in the Forgotten Land, a.k.a. The Last of Us. It looked like The Last of Us <laughs> when we first saw this trailer. It was. It was all like this like desecrated city. Earth had taken it over. I was like, okay, what is this? 
it was a Kirby game. I did not see that coming. So a new Kirby game, friends, is coming to Nintendo Switch, and it looks like an interesting addition to the series. Kirby and the Forgotten Land is a new adventure starring the Pink Puffball, and it has a planned release date of spring 2022. The first trailer showed Kirby freely exploring 3D areas, which included an abandoned urban city, an arcade, and some lush jungles. Apparently, it was leaked earlier in the day by Nintendo's Japanese release calendar. Its Japanese title translates to Kirby, Discovery of the Stars. The new game is a post-apocalyptic vibe that almost makes it feel like a cuter take on The Last of Us. Oh, hey. Kirby is able to traverse the map freely with his signature flow ability, although not everyone in this abandoned land looks friendly. Kirby has to contend with some familiar enemies, including a giant crocodile-like beast snapping at his heels. It's about time that we get, you know, like, Kirby's epic yarn, adorable, and it had, Kirby had another game recently. Cute, but good. I'm happy to see our pink friend who swallows things and becomes those things. Don't know where I was going with that. Have his own 3D game. Good for you, sir. That said, what did you think of the trailer? I thought it was cute. Charlie yeah. liked it the best out of all the trailers that she watched during the Nintendo Direct. Um, I'm not a Kirby person. Like I haven't really ever been invested in Kirby as a character. I think it's interesting that they're doing something a little different. I think the 3D is you know, fun and necessary to advance the series a little bit. But I mean, some of the 2D stuff that they've done with Kirby has been really well done as well. So mm -hmm. it looks cute. It was Kirby's Epic Yarn. Oh, Kirby's Epic Yarn, Yoshi's Woolly World. Uh, that was going to mix up. Yeah, I mean, and here's the thing. It's like I was looking at the Kirby trailer, and I was like, okay, it looks cute. I mean, there's some clips where there looks like there's a lot of action, enemies, some fun platforming going on, and other clips where it just looks barren and naked, Andrea, barren and naked. And then I thought to myself – Whoa, bitch, slow your roll. This is a Kirby game. This isn't some, like, Mario platformer. It's supposed to be a chill, easy, relaxing game. You are a pink puffball that puff ball that floats through the air, and it's supposed to be a relaxing experience. So for that reason, I'm not going to be too hard on it. But there were, like, certain times where I was looking at it, and I was like, eh, it looks cute, but, like, is it going to be... Is there gonna be? Is it gonna be fun? You know what I mean. Like I feel like this is kind of an issue with a lot of Nintendo S games. It's like you have these big, vast open worlds or like lands or areas, sandboxes, if you will, and there's just not a lot that's taking it up. I am talking specifically. I'm being very passive aggressive towards Pokemon Arceus right now. That's what I'm doing. I'm not even gonna hide it. So I look at. <laughs> Stop me now. Stop me now. Move on. Move on. I, okay. I'm about to go off on a tangent. All right, Britt. I'm putting a pin in it. You don't get to go on a rant about Pokemon. There was zero Pokemon. There wasn't. In this, I can't fucking in help this it. Nintendo Direct. It's my blood <laughs> boiling, girl. All right, let's go. All right, so we've got quite a few other bullet points. I'm just going to run down here. Let's see. What do we got here? Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak expansion is coming in 2022. They actually started the show with a little look at this expansion that's coming. Um... Disco Elysium Final Cut is coming in October. Castlevania Advanced Collection is coming to Switch. Um, as Brittany already mentioned, we're getting a Super Smash specific direct um, to talk about the final character coming to Smash. So more on that later. Uh, the cult classic SNES game, Act Razor, has been remastered and is out now. You can buy it today if you want to. That was kind of a fun moment for the internet people in my timeline very excited about this god game i actually never played act razor when it first came out were you ever no. into god games or you never checked this one out either mm -hmm. right nope nope it was not for um, me populous um, was the god game that i loved on snes but andrea never played act razor i love um, you so so much but you skipped probably over oh, the story that i'm no, most no. excited about I, yeah, I was saving it for the end so okay, that we could do it. Sure. So I could just run through the bullet points, and that way I could be like Brittany. But the real news that we have to talk about today <laughs> is <laughs> I don't know how to play on this thing. Oh my god, friends, we are getting fucking N64 games on the Switch. Hallelujah! Plays whatever, praise whatever God you you believe in. I have to admit. I did not think this was actually going to happen. I knew it would happen at some point, Andrea, but I didn't think it would happen like today. You know what I mean? It's just, yeah. of, I going into this direct, all I said, I want three things. I want Ocarina of Time on the Switch. I want Super Mario RPG and I want Earthbound. Did not get the last two, but I got the first one. And to me, like, hey, I can die a happy woman. I have been wanting to play Ocarina of Time on my Switch since it came out. And I've been wanting to go through another run of Ocarina of Time. I have been holding off, holding off until Nintendo finally did the thing. Because I knew in my heart they would someday. 
and I just got it a little earlier than I thought I would. So yeah, so Nintendo Switch Online is getting what's called Nintendo Switch Online Plus Expansion Pack coming out in late October. And not only does it give you N64 games, but I did not see this coming either, Sega Genesis games. Cool. I, great. I think that's awesome. No pricing yet. But it will obviously cost a little bit more. I mean, that's the assumption. I think that's the obvious conclusion here. So for those of you who are like not entirely sure of what right now an NSO online subscription costs, it's $3.99 a month, or you can pay $7.99 for three months or $19.99 for 12 months. So there's a lot of like hoopla right now about why would Nintendo charge you for more? It's because they can. Friends. You know why? You <laughs> know they why? Can. <laughs> I, I tweeted uh, about this. I was like, you kind of gotta respect the balls oh. on Nintendo to keep saying, "You suckers, keep buying this shit." So we're gonna keep putting it out, and you're just gonna keep buying it over and over again, lapping up that cream like the fat cats that you are. Oh, absolutely, uh, girl! I lost my goddamn mind. I was. But I thought you wanted the 3ds port of ocarina of time and not the original version did i get that wrong you got that wrong because i like the original the original version what i really want is the master quest version which is a pre-order bonus for i believe wind waker which included like some re- dungeons that were modified slightly and blah, blah blah going down a tangent um so no i'm very happy with this very very happy with this and alongside this announcement of course they announced that n64 and sega genesis controllers are being made for the switch this is the weirdest thing ever. girl like listen i'm i'm a nostalgia fan i love my retro shit but god fuck me if i ever want to hold another n64 controller in my hand for 50 freaking dollars dollars i will play a green of time on a pro controller all day every day like i the n64 i had a good time with it we had a good run friend but i do not need you in my hands anymore yeah i don't know i don't you don't it's just i you know what i don't want to poo poo this because there's definitely people out there that are super thrilled that they can play sega genesis games on their nintendo switch it is just a little head scratching considering how heated that rivalry was between sego and nintendo sego Um, sega and nintendo sego it's the new (laughs) it's the new combo uh company everybody but it was a really big like head-to-head competition between them back in the day and now that they're working together that you can buy sega hardware to play on your nintendo system is just something I never predicted would happen. And I think it makes sense when you look at the nostalgia market and Nintendo's firm grip on the nostalgia market and how much money they continue to make off of it. And you see these other boxes, you know, the um, the Intellivision mm. right, box that came out, and then you have the little Atari box that you can yeah. get. And obviously Sega has their own little like mini, like classic editions, right? It's just makes sense that Nintendo would say, yo, why don't you just put everything on our platform that has, you know, th- over 30 million installs and, you know, you give us like a big chunk of the profits. And Sega's like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, is it only 30? I thought it was more than that. I said over 30. Oh, I don't know what their like, latest I think numbers like are. 60, 60 million as of August of 2020. So, well, listen, okay, I'm listen, behind the times. It's okay. I no. said over 30 million. You're not wrong. That's correct. <laughs> <laughs> Estimation, friends. It's a great thing. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, I, I'm really excited about this. And yeah, like, <sighs> hey, where else are you going to play some Genesis games? Who knows? I don't care. All I know is I'm getting my green of time. We're getting Mario Kart 64. There are more games coming eventually. Paper Mario. Happy. Paper Mario. Yes. F Zero X. Very exciting. Very exciting. I'm happy this happened. I'm very happy this happened. And there is one more thing I want to briefly talk about that happened during this, Andrea. Yes. And I don't know if you talked about it, but Chocobo GP. Oh, it's- I totally forgot to bring that one up. My, that oh, is my bad. Yeah, I had okay. it. I had the story pulled and then I forgot to put it into the notes. So I'm glad you rem- you remembered because you were tweeting about how excited you were about that. I have some conspiracy theories, friends, because I am trying to convince myself and everyone else that there is a Final Fantasy IX remake coming because there was that NVIDIA GeForce leak where it mentioned a Final Fantasy IX remake. We're getting that Final Fantasy IX animated series. And now we have Chocobo GP, which is like a Mario Kart, but with Final Fantasy characters and iconic 
summons and there's a chocobo and all that good shit and so it's it's, think of mario kart right you're racing around the track which the tracks are from like iconic locations within final fantasy you have golden saucer there's something that looks like Lindblom, and you collect these things which are called magist magicites like magic stones is what they are but they're called magicites (laughs) and they're items that you can use during your race if you get three of a kind you can cast spells so you can do like fire 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 aga I don't know how you say that, but the third version of the fire spell. So there's like, there's a fun Final Fantasy twist to it. But what's got my panties in a very tight bundle is all of the screen time my Final Fantasy IX friends got in this trailer. So we had Vivi, aka MJ, if you're Andrea. You got Mm -hmm. Steiner, aka the Hoff, if you're Andrea. And (laughs) then, and then there was a chorus that looked like Lindblom. And so, like, if you're a Final Fantasy IX fan, friends, you know. Our baby does not get the screen time it deserves. It hardly gets any screen time. It usually gets passed up for everything. The fact that they showed those characters in that scene got me thinking. They're trying to get Final Fantasy IX in front of the eyeballs of millions of people, which means like that remake has to be happening. Asterisk, it does not have to mean that it's happening. But I want to believe that it's happening. So there's my piece. I'm speaking it out into the universe. So when this does happen, I can look back on this and call myself a genius. That's all you can do. Is just Thanks. speak your truth and, and hope for it. Like me, I'm hoping that Mario Kart 9 maybe is in development somewhere and we'll <laughs> eventually hear about it. And not just these other kart racers on Nintendo's platform. <laughs> <sighs> <sighs> I wore uh, my Mario Kart shirt today. You and did. It, it's really it didn't cute. Happen. Didn't happen. Didn't you wear that during the Nintendo World Championships? No, or I not? did not, actually. Oh, okay. um, I bought this when I was in New York for the Nintendo World Championships, but I didn't wear this shirt because I thought it was too busy Ah, for, you know, national television. Um, I yeah. also wanted to wear a jacket because it was really cold in the in the stage that we were at. Mm. And uh, then I'd cover up these really cool sleeves. But let me tell you, you know, who loves this shirt? My Charlie? baby. <laughs> oh, she's like, oh, my God, so many contrasts. She's like, black, white, and red, my favorite colors. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, that's a that's a newborn joke because my shirt has black and white checkers on the sleeves and babies can only see uh, very simple black and white patterns for the first couple of months of their life. Anywho, um, there was a couple other things in the direct today. Um, we also got to hear about Dying Light um, mm. coming to Nintendo Switch, which was, you know. A thing, Platinum Edition is available um, on October 19th. And then there's going to be the cloud version of Dying Light 2, which launches, um, I was going to say later this year, but it got bumped again to spring 2022, right? February 2022. <laughs> yeah. It it's going to be like December. And I was like, no, that's not right. They delayed it again. <laughs> they definitely delayed it again. Um, yeah, it's, yeah. It's interesting that when you see these games coming to Switch and I was like, okay, how are they going to do this? It has to be the cloud version. And it was, but clearly it works out like, okay, for people because it's an option and the options are always good. But yeah, um, I'm curious to see how that's going to run. Only time will tell. Let's now talk about some video games that we've been playing. But first, a word from our sponsors. This episode of What's Good Games is brought to you by HelloFresh. Have you tried America's number one meal kit? With HelloFresh, you get fresh pre-measured ingredients and mouth-watering seasonal recipes delivered right to your door. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. HelloFresh offers the flexibility you need to easily customize your order on the app within minutes. Easily change your delivery day, food preferences, and plan size, or skip a week whenever you need to. HelloFresh is over 30% cheaper than shopping at grocery stores with pre-portioned ingredients that ensure you won't spend any money on excess food that ends up going in the trash. The fall harvest is officially on with HelloFresh. Count on seasonal recipes like pumpkin cinnamon rolls and friends giving ready sides as well as fresh high quality ingredients that travel from the farm to your front door in less than a week. Now this is how easy these meals are to put together, Andrea. Last week, it was 11 p.m., and we needed to make some food, but you know, the week just got away from us. I looked at Jason and I said, do you wanna have a cooking party? So he and I made two meals at 11 p.m. and were wrapped up by like 11.40. I we love made it. Pros- yep, we made prosciutto wrapped chicken and oh. some Arthur's subs that had um, pork sausage and green peppers and onions. Oh, delicious. Mm. Delicious. See, and I'm a lazy person, friends, but I had the gusto to do it. 
So if you want to try America's number one meal kit for yourself, go to HelloFresh.com slash What's Good 14 and use code What's Good 14 for up to 14 free meals, including free shipping. That's HelloFresh.com slash What's Good 14 and use What's Good 14 for up to 14 free meals, including free shipping. Thinking about some firecracker meatballs. <sighs> oh, those are so good. They're in my box next week. <laughs> This episode of What's Good Games is also brought to you by Fixture Gaming. Did all the games in the Nintendo Direct today get you hyped to play your Switch this fall? You know it did. So you should check out the perfect Nintendo Switch accessory, the Fixture S1. Fixture S1 was created by gamers for gamers who love the Nintendo Switch and the Pro Controller, but want to be able to play on the go. The original patented design connects the Nintendo Switch to the Pro Controller for comfortable, precise, portable play, offering a great alternative to Joy-Cons. Designed to be exceptionally ergonomic, it balances the screen weight over your hands, reducing screen rotation and minimizing the strain on your wrist. Fixture S1's patented two-access design allows you to smoothly and easily adjust the angle and the height of your switch, providing stability and balance in any playing position for optimal comfort and gaming performance. Snap your Pro Controller into Fixture S1 for handheld play or use it as a stand in tabletop mode. Or if you guys want, you can charge the Switch and the Pro Controller at the same time. And the Fixture S1's thoughtful design routes the power cord out the back so they never interfere with play. For when you're on the go, you can upgrade your Fixture S1 experience with their companion carrying case that securely holds your Switch, cables, game cards, and more. To learn more about Fixture Gaming, head to FixtureGaming.com where you can get $5 off of your purchase with code WGG at checkout or visit Fixture Gaming's Amazon page by clicking our link in the show notes. That's Fixture Gaming, F-I-X-T-U-R-E-G-A-M-I-N-G.com where you use code WGG to get $5 off of your purchase or you can use our link in the show notes to visit Fixture Gaming on Amazon to pick up your Fixture S1 today. <clears throat> Guess what, Brittany? What? I got to play Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy. Aw, oh, shit. That is, when well, you told me that, I was like, What? Tell me more. And you're like, bitch, you got to wait until Thursday. Yeah. And now it's Thursday because there was an embargo. So we had to make sure that we weren't breaking the embargo. Um, so, friends, I was pretty excited when they announced this game back at E3. I didn't play as much of Marvel's Avengers as I wanted to. Really enjoyed the campaign, but didn't really have a crew to roll with in multiplayer, even though I know Steimer and Jackie were like, we are playing, and she did the whole Wakanda expansion and everything. We never got to talk about it. Um, but I just have really liked the Guardians as a group of kind of ragtag heroes a little bit more than some of the other heroes in the marvel universe not just the marvel cinematic universe but just kind of like marvel lore in general i just kind of think that they're a fun interesting group and obviously the movies in the mcu uh, directed by james gunn have been so well done i was a little concerned after watching some gameplay that they might fall under the same criticism that avengers went under with that whole uncanny valley the mm. characters don't look like the actors and that really bothers people but I think the Guardians get away with it a little bit more because, one, it's like Groot and Rocket are non-human. So kind of, <laughs> you know, dodged a bullet there. And then, like, Drax and Gamora, you know, are humanoid, but they're not the same like Star-Lord is, right? And so Star-Lord wears a mask a lot of the time. So I think that they're going to get away with it a little bit more. But I had a really great time playing. And the folks at Square Enix um, brought – or sent me over some b-roll which i'm gonna show you guys so let me just get that pulled up here but overall i had a really great time with the playthrough so i only got about an hour um with the game and so that was a little that was mm. a little challenging for me that i wanted more time because they dropped us in to uh an area of the game that was like in chapter five and so what that means is that we got, kind of got dropped into combat without any practice with combat. So nice. we did get to spend some time walking around the Milano, which is the ship that you travel around the galaxy with, with your guardians. And then you're able to, as you can see here, have conversations with people on, those shi on the ship. And what I think is going to be interesting about what they're doing narratively here is 
it appears like you're going to be able to have um, conversations with people and that the conversations that you have um, are going to affect some of the narrative options like huh. and I don't know exactly how it's going to play out because like there's trees narrative trees and you can pick you know one side or the other and um we just don't know quite how that's all gonna how that's all gonna work out yet but um overall the game looks really good I think that you know the graphics um are on point and I think that some of the art that they've done for um, the gameplay that I've seen so far looks um looks pretty good. So let me pull up some combat for you guys. Obviously, Guardians of the Galaxy is a crew of five. And you get to use a lot of these powers in combination with each other, which I think is really fun. It does take a little bit of practice, as I mentioned. So I started out um, kind of a little bit frustrated because I was really having trouble getting the hang of some of these um, some of these abilities and kind of some of the ways that they combo together. But what I like about it is that once you get the hang of it, you can really have some fun and the combat really kind of gets frenetic. So one of the things that I really loved about the way that they've highly stylized the combat is that they are putting a ton of flair, as you would expect for a Guardians of the Galaxy game, and one of the things that they're doing, which I think is going to really annoy a bunch of streamers, is that they have this awesome soundtrack. So if you guys watch the Guardians of the Galaxy movie, they the, the soundtracks, I think, are some of the best that we've seen in movies, like the 70s music. I don't know, Brittany, were you into it? Are you into that era of music at all? Uh, no, not really. That's fair. I mean, I guess I should know from every time that you've ever been in my car that we listened to like early 2000 music. So in the 90s, baby. It's all about those ni that 90s magic. Um, a question about the combat. Do you only play as Star-Lord? I can't remember. Or do you get to play as different characters? Yes, you only play as Star-Lord. Um, oh, okay, so you yeah. have to sync up your combos with your AI counterparts. Yeah, so the way that it works, and I don't have the exact names of all of the... Um, things that each character does because there's a bunch of different ones. One of the abilities that Rocket has is this grenade ability. And what's really cool about it is that you can kind of prime some of the other characters with their ability first and weaken the enemies. And then you like send Rocket's grenade over there and it just kind of wipes them all out. And what's interesting is that there's this huddle up mechanic. So I'm kind of on the fence if I like this mechanic or not. And I don't think I have any footage of it, but Essentially, once you build this meter on the right-hand side of the screen, you'll get enough energy to do this huddle. And what happens is it goes into comes out of third-person perspective and goes into first-person as Star-Lord. And then you have all four of your squad mates around you. And you have this moment of dialogue. But what's weird hmm. about it is that it happens in the middle of combat. So you're, like, in this, you know, fast and furious moment where you're, you know throwing grenades and meleeing people and shooting them with your guns and firing off elemental attacks like it's combat is really kind of frenzied in this game and then you get this meter and then it kind of everything slows down and if you answer answer the narrative prompt correctly everybody in your party is going to get a damage boost but if you don't only star lord gets a damage boost so huh. you get a damage buff no matter what but it's weird that there's like this narrative moment in the middle of combat where you have to decide which part, which one you're going to pick based off how the crew is feeling in that moment. It was, huh? That's too much. That's too much like tapping into your emotions in the middle of the heat of battle. <laughs> yeah. I just, huh. I wasn't huh. a fan of it because of just how much I thought it was interrupting combat. Cause I was like, Hey, like I feel like I'm in a flow and I'm doing well. And then you, I think when you get like a super ability, you want to be able to like smash those bumper buttons, like the L1 R1 together yeah. and have something really kind of explosive happen and be like, I feel really powerful and I feel like a superhero and this is about, you know, superheroes, right? Guardians of the Galaxy. And it doesn't feel that way to me. It really feels like they're trying to do something way more style, stylized than I want from a combat experience. Mm, and yeah, 
I, I've read some other reviews from other people, not reviews, I should say previews from other people who were at the event with me. And I think it's like a mixed bag. Like some people really liked the huddle mechanics and other people like me were like, this feels a little awkward and weird. But mm. overall, the combat, by the end of my demo, I finally got the hang of it. And I thought it was really fun. And I'm interested to see more. There's an upgrade system where you can bring bits of things to Rocket and he'll craft upgrades for you. Um, we don't really know how the, like I mentioned, the branchy narrative is going to work. There were a couple things that were a little troubling to me in the demo that I wanted to point out. And one of that is the way that the dialogue kind of works with each other. So in the Milano, when you're walking around, you can go to different places on the ship and interact with objects and different crew members will come over and kind of have these conversations with you. So you can like go into Gamora's quarters and look at things in her room and she'll kind of have a conversation with you about it. And it was this weird break in, I don't want to call it like a fourth wall break because that's just not, not what I'm trying to convey, but it was this weird like disjointed thing that was happening where I would pick up an object and then mm -hmm. it would cue like a cutscene dialogue between me and her where we would go back and forth and I would pick like narrative branching options and she would give me dialogue and then she would be like, okay, I'm leaving now. And then she would like leave the room and then I would pick up something else and then she would magically be back in the room again. Oh, that's weird. So it's like they're trying to give her an out of the conversation. But I feel like when you have those in most games, the character is just like the conversation just like naturally ends. It's not like they decide to leave or something, right? Right. Yeah. Like she physically like left the room and the door like <laughs> shut behind her and then she would poop would be back in the room she talking to me and I was like this is not right and I'm hoping that stuff like that is going to mm. get fixed before the game launches because I think those little things add up over time and there was a lot of dialogue that was on top of each other there was a lot of miscues of dialogue so let's say part of a mission has dialogue between me and one character and then if there was like this ambient dialogue for the room that I was in it would still be playing oh okay. and so it would be like VO lines on top of each other which I know sometimes can happen when you have like a third person game and there's like NPCs that have cued dialogue or whatever but yeah it was really jarring because it wasn't like I'm walking through a big open world where there's all kinds of NPCs having their own dialogue, doing their own thing. It's like I'm on a ship having a specific conversation with like one other crew member and there's just like one other person in the room just like having their own conversation alongside ours. And if it was yeah. really just three people in a room, it'd be like hell awkward to be like, Bob, can't you see that I'm talking to Jim over here? Can you just Bob, hold up for a up, second, Bob? Bob? Oh my God, I know. That happens in uh, Lost Judgment sometimes. I'll be like wandering around and some random NPC, like civilian, will just start talking when yeah. I'm having a conversation. And I'm like, sir, you're being a little too loud right now. So I am not like the hugest Marvel's or Guardians of the Galaxy fan. Not because I don't enjoy it. Like, the movies I've seen, I think, are really fun. And I'm all for a good time. But when it comes to, like, interacting with these characters and chatting with them and going through all these trees that you're talking about, it sounds like, from what you understand, that that does have some impact on the narrative. Is there, like, do you know, is there, like, a friendship meter? Are we going Bioware with this shit? Or is it just for kind of shits and giggles? Um, that's the thing is that I don't know. They, they didn't really give us any inclination of just how impactful that stuff is going to be on the narrative overall. Obviously, it's going to have an impact. So, for example, in the mission that we played, the scene that we just saw here, um, you can either choose to speak mm. into the helmet here or not speak into the helmet. And if you choose to speak into this helmet, um, somebody on the other end answers and it changes the combat flow for what happens next. So either is you going in guns blazing or you sneaking in to the next scene. Oh, okay. So that clearly has an impact on the way that the game is going to play out. But what are those micro decisions and how do they impact like the macro decisions or the macro arc of the story is yet to be seen. I think that's something we're probably not going to be able to find out until the game comes out. But it's, you know, I think overall this game definitely looked better than I thought it was going to. I'm going to say full stop that I went into this demo expecting to walk away like, meh, meh, no thanks. 
because it's so hard to translate some of these characters that grew in popularity thanks to the MCU into video games. Obviously, they have a rich history in comic books, but there's no denying that Marvel's work with their cinematic studios are what makes people want to buy these video games, right? Like there's characters like Spider-Man who got to stand alone and who will always sell video games. But like Guardians of the Galaxy were kind of like this dark horse, like culty part of Marvel Comics before the James Gunn movies. And then everybody knew who Guardians of the Galaxy were. And now I think that people are interested in this video game. And it actually looks like it's going to be pretty cool if they can, you know, polish up some of these little things that I kind of found. I think the the underline for the combat looks really fun. Um, and overall, I think this is going to be a, a very really good game. Do I think this is going to be like Spider-Man level? No. Like, don't walk in thinking that you're playing Marvel Spider-Man. You're not. But you could still have a lot of fun. Yeah. I mean, just from what I've seen, it looks fun. Like, I'm, like I said, I'm all for a good time. I'm not looking for some deep cut lore bullshit, which is why I was kind of asking about the, the narrative dialogues in the trees. I'm like, ooh, do I have incentive to get to know these characters? Or is it more about just kind of like playing a fun game with some fun moments and some fun combat? But I'm excited exactly. about it, actually. Yeah. And I mean, again, it's all about expectations. And I think Andrea has perfectly set some expectations for us. Yeah. Thanks. I did want to mention that there are some fun zingers, some fun Oops. one-liners, as you would expect the comedy aspect of Guardians of the Galaxy is present. So I actually wrote down one of these lines in my notes because I thought it was really funny. <laughs> so... During the during a moment of combat, uh, Rocket says to the enemy, "Call off your dogs," <laughs> and Drax says, "I do not see any dogs." <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, Rocket was referring to like the soldiers, like call right, off right. the soldiers. And Drax, of course, taking everything literally is like, there are no dogs. Yeah, and see, like, that's the kind of interaction that I think is really fun. And that's the kind of interaction I love from the movies. Like, those one-liners, those zingers, as you call them, always get me. And, like, that's that's a good time. Yeah. I'm all for that. I love and all that And the music. Shit. I, cannot, I cannot overstate how fun the music in combat is. Like, so during the first combat encounter I had, it's, we're not going to take it, just fires up. And so <laughs> we're just <laughs> like pew pewing all over the place and it's like we're not gonna take it no we're gonna, gonna take, take it. it and i was just like this is fucking badass i love this but it's obviously a dmca freaking nightmare for <laughs> anyone who wants to stream and they did confirm there will be a streamer friendly mode but i mean but wow to way to take the wind out of the sails of such a fun moment in combat to say oh yeah we can make it stream friendly but it essentially just means we're gonna muting. take all those out yeah, yeah, it just it means reminds me of, a, of the Far Cry games because they always have the best tracks for certain missions. I think of the in Far Cry Five, the bull testicle mission where you have to get him, and Let's Get It On starts playing. Oh my god, so fucking Ugh. good! Yeah, Ugh. but yeah, I imagine if you're playing on stream, it's just, you're just not going to get that impact. No, no, yeah. definitely not. So, I mean, word to the wise: if you are planning to play this game, and if you're a streamer out there, um, I recommend maybe having some experiences with the game before you stream. So you can really feel the punch and the weight of this amazing soundtrack. Because let me tell you, when you die, which you will, um, when you go back and replay that section of combat, it's a different song. So like, oh, really? The next, it's like the next song in the playlist. And so you're going to get some good <laughs> tunes um, while you go back and redo some of your combat encounters. So Hell yeah. Awesome. Yeah, but I had a fun time with it. Overall, like the gripes that I had were very minor. I think that the combat looks cool. Uh, I just, you know, want to set expectations that you go into this realizing that this isn't going to reinvent the wheel. This isn't going to be game of the year, but um, you're probably going to have a fun time with it if you're a fan of Guardians of the Galaxy in other areas of the Marvel Universe. There you go. That's, yeah. There you go. Got game of the year, girl. Can you believe it? The game of, year, game of the year discussion is upon us. It's not far away. Ooh. I'm not ready. I have no. more to play. I haven't finished Ratchet and Clank yet. Oh. I haven't finished Life is Strange yet. There's so many. I mean, I'm giving us a pass this year because we were out of commission and we're still out of commission to an yes. extent. True. But it's true. Yeah. It's going to be an interesting year for the What's Good Game Awards. Oh. I'm going to get a cut out of Steimer. 
Oh, well, maybe we'll see if she can come back. Hey, girl. She said she would come back for some episodes. She did, and I'm going to require that she does it all in German. Now that will be interesting. <laughs> and by interesting, I mean very difficult. <laughs> um, I don't know German, so are you planning to learn German by then? Listen, girl, my name ain't Brombacher for nothing. Touche. Touche. My, my maiden name German. is also German, um, which is... I, something we never talked about until now anywho uh next week we will be back i will be talking more about probably about life is strange i played a bunch more of death loop which by the way oh. is a very difficult game to play when you have a baby <laughs> oh yeah mm. <laughs> yeah i'm still playing lost judgment i've sunk another 15 hours into it and I still have made, made a very little progress in terms of like the main narrative, but I'm just really enjoying just kind of like trucking through, you know, doing some dance routines at the dance club or doing some robotics things at the robots club. Now I'm at a girl's bar where I'm trying to woo women, Andrea. It's a glorious time. I'm having a lovely time, but I'm thinking about life is strange next. But I don't know if I want the gut punch that you talked about last week. There's just so much. It's so from. chill otherwise, though. I mean, yeah. if you just go in knowing that it's a Life is Strange game, so it's going to get emotional at some points, but you're not going to, like, have a breakdown or anything. Are you sure? These or, you radical. know, if you really want to just prepare yourself and not have any potential triggers, just read a spoiler. Damn you and your logic, girl. I got nothing. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's going to, like, you know, make the gameplay experience different if you do it that way. But, you know, it's one way to play. It's true. Don't forget they have lots of great accessibility options this time around. God, yeah. Take advantage. There's so many games, so little time. Indeed. Indeed. Oh, and there's Diablo 2 Remastered, which I completely forgot about until right now. Oh, shit balls! Yes. Definitely it's out. That. It's out. That game is out. <sighs> it is out in the wilds. The gates of hell have been unleashed upon all of us. It is time to go back and fuck some skeletons up. Yep. We should do that. We should play. I'm down. I love how we both are like, let's make plans to play a multiplayer game together. LOL. 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 <laughs> okay. Let us fantasize. Sure. <laughs> Uh, if it didn't oh, happen before boy. kids, it ain't happening after kids, baby girl. But that's okay. Exactly. You know exactly. I love you. All right. Well, that's going to do it for us this week. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. We will see you next week. Have a wonderful weekend. Bye.